to end the year, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, statistics. And one of the things that is necessary to discuss before we jump into statistics as a whole is measures of center and variation in position. So typically what a measure of center is, is basically an, a type of an average, or when we talk about numbers in the middle. Measures of center are also referred to as measures of central tendency. And there are three that we typically have discussed uh, over the years, and I'm sure you've seen this in middle school. You've got a mean, which is basically add up all the numbers and divide by the total number of numbers in the set. A median is actually the middle value, or it's the middle two values and the average of that. So it's the mean of the middle two numbers in the data set. And then it's very important when we talk about the median that you arrange those numbers in numerical order. And lastly, the mode is the number that most frequently appears in the data set. And you can have typically more than one mode. You could have one mode, and you don't have to have any for that matter, because you may just have one singular number being represented multiple times. So let's go ahead and calculate a couple of these based on the number of numbers in the set. So here's a set of data with some numbers, and we want to find the mean, median, and mode. The first thing we're going to do on pretty much all these problems is take and write this in numerical order. So we've got a 2. We've got, and usually I'll just cancel them off when I go through, a 5. We've got 2 eighths. We got a 12 and a 13 and a 30. So I've rewritten things in numerical order. Now, if I want to just take and find the average or the mean, basically I add these numbers up and divide by the total number of numbers. So in this case, I have seven numbers. It's a 2 plus 5 plus 8 plus 8 plus 12 plus 13 and 30. Divide that by 7. So in this case, we get about 11.14. Now, when we find a median, we're going to take and look at the middle number in the set. So the middle number means there's an even number of numbers on either side. And you'll notice in this case, there's an odd number of numbers in the set, so there should be only one middle number. If I count in, one on each side, two on each side, three on each side, you'll notice that this number is the number dead center middle. So eight is our median, because I have three numbers on each side of it. In our mode, it's pretty easy to see that eight appears the most, so our mode is also Eight. You go to a bigger number set now, and more than just a bigger number set, we have an even number of numbers, so that's going to change how we calculate the median a little bit. So let's rewrite this set once again. We have one, a four, it's like three fives, that's all those off. Nine and a ten. Thirteen. Fifteen. Eighteen. And that looks like two twenties. So once again, let's count how many numbers we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 10, 11, 12 numbers. So we'll add all these numbers up and divide by 12. In doing so, we end up with an average of 10.41. Now, once again, if we want to find a median, 
you make sure you have an even number of numbers on either side. But since this data set has an even number of numbers in it, we're going to find out we've got a, a situation. Counting one, two, three, four, five. And you'll notice if I go six in on both sides, then I have no middle number. So what I'm left with is I have actually two middle numbers. And if I want to find the median with an even set of numbers in the data set, I'm always going to have two middle numbers. So what we do with that is we say, okay, well, our median is just going to be the average of those two middle numbers. So in this case, I'm going to get 9.5. And that's not even a number in the data set, which is okay because the average wasn't a number in the data set either. The mode, pretty easy in this case. The 5 appears three times. So the mode is equal to 5. Now, there are several times when we can have small sets of data, large sets of data that have actually the same mean. We could have 100 numbers that have a mean of 27, and we could have three numbers that have a mean of 27. And if you just are given the mean, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot about that data set. So statisticians will often use what are called measures of variation or measures of dispersion to describe how widely spread their data values are. And the most often used is what's called the range. And that's different than the range of the y's in like a function. The range is just the difference between the greatest and the least value in the data set. So if I look at this data set down here, clearly my smallest number is a 1 and my largest number is an 8. So my range in this case is 28 minus 1 or 27. And that is a measure of variation or dispersion. When we talk about measures of position, this is another way to discuss what that data set looks like. We talk about the position of a data value relative to the other values in the set. And one of the things they use are something called quartiles. And quartiles basically cut up your data into force, if you will. They divide the data into sets of 25%. So 25% will be at one portion, 25% in another, 25% again, and 25%. The lower quartile is the number that describes where the bottom 25% of the number is. We just did the median. The median is dead center middle, so that means we got 50% of the data above and 50% below. And the upper quartile is a number that describes where above that number there's 25% of the data. So let's go ahead and calculate quartiles for a set of data. So here's a set of data, and we're going to calculate the quartiles and the median. Well, quartiles are just a fancy kind of name for the median of a median. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure we rewrite this data set in order. So I've done it rather quickly here, and let's count the number of numbers we have so we'll be clear on how we're going to calculate the median. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 numbers. Which means we're going to have two middles, if you will. So let's count in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in. And there's our two middle numbers of 10 and 14. So our median in this case, dead center middle, is the average of 10 and 14, which is 12. And if we want to find those quartiles, we're looking for the bottom 25%. So we take where the median would be, which is between these two numbers, and say, okay, if I cut this data in half, then now we need to find where half of those halves are. 
Well, you'll notice within each half, you have five, seven, seven, eight, nine, and ten for this half. And then on the other half, we have 14, 15, 18, 20, 21, and 100. Now, we need to find the middle of these. You'll notice that each of these has six terms in it, so again, we're going to have two middles. Here's the middle of this set, and if I add 7 plus 8 divided by 2, which gives me 7.5, this describes quartile 1. or the lower quartile. Sometimes referred to as Q1. The upper quartile will be found by finding the median of this data set. So again, six numbers, two middles. Take the average of 18 and 20, which gives me 19, and 19 will be what we call Q3. The median is also a quartile, if you will, because it's a 50% mark, and they'll sometimes call that median Q2, rarely, but it really is a second quartile. So really what we've got is we've got the data cut into quarters, one here, one here, and one here. And you'll notice, since none of these numbers were numbers in the set, you've got three numbers in each quarter, plus 25% of the data between and after every one of our quartiles. Now, you'll notice that in this case, we had quartiles at 7.5, Another quartile at 14 and a half. Whoops, 12, I lied. Let's get rid of that. Another quartile at 19. And if we take a look at quartile one or the lower quartile and quartile three, there's something called an inner quartile range, which is the difference between the upper and the lower quartiles. So the inner quartile range. range being the difference between the high and the low, is basically 19 minus 7.5. So if we just take 19 minus 7.5 and get 11.5, that's our inner quartile range. Now, you'll notice in this data set there's one number that's distinctly different from the rest. That would be this 100 because these dat, this set of data right here is all grouped between 5 and 20, and then you've got this 100 hanging way out here. This number is going to throw off a lot of our measures of center, especially the average, because it's going to weight heavily on the sum. So an outlier is a number that's either much higher or much lower than the rest of the data. So 100 in this case is an outlier. Now there's something called a box and whisker plot. Here's our same set of data. We said we had a median here. We said we had a quartile here. And a quartile here. Now what a box and whisker plot is, is it's a plot that basically just graphs these specific numbers. So what it does is it takes your lowest number and graphs that first. So we start with 5. Let's put a dot here. Then it goes out to 100. Put 100 over here. It graphs the high number. Then we find the middle. The middle is 12. And if I was to scale this appropriately, 12 would be somewhere here. 7.5 between these two somewhere. 
over here. And 19, uh, let's say somewhere around. Once again, Q1, median, Q3. And then what happens in a box in Worcester is we take and draw a box around quartile one and three or the lower and upper quartile, and then put a divider right at the median, connect the box to the two, upper value and the lower value. And what we've got is we've got a box in what they call these two whiskers right here. Pretty easy once you've calculated all your quartiles. And what it, this box does is it basically says, well, 25% of our data is between 19 and 100. So you can visually see that. And this visual says, well, this data must be really spread out. But once again, the outliers kind of confuse us because that data is really not that spread out. You've got 20 and 21, which is over here, and then 100 way out here. Then you have another 25% of the data between 12 and 19. And that's pretty fair grouping, and it's pretty compacted. And then we have another 12% of the data between 7.5 and 10. So you'll see this is a smaller space, thus the numbers are more compacted. And then, once again, another 25% of the data between 5 and 7.5. So again, it's pretty compacted. So it just gives us a visual of how that data is laid out. Now, one of the things is we can use our calculator to actually calculate these quartiles. So let's go ahead and do that. So our first step is going to be to plug in our data. What we need to do is go to the stat button right here, hit that. And then we're going to edit, so we hit number one. Now you may have something in these lists right here. If you do, you go up to the list and then clear. And then bring it back down and that clears your list out. And you go up to the list and clear and back down. Make sure you don't hit delete because delete will take and delete your whole list from the problem and then you have to reset your calculator. So anyways, I'm going to plug these numbers in. So I have five, two sevens, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, fifteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, and one hundred. And you'll notice the nice thing about it is it checks to see how many numbers you've plugged in. So I've got 12 numbers plugged in right now. So what we want to do next is we want to calculate our median and quartiles and maybe even our average. So calculator will do that. If you hit from here, stat, and move over to calculate, in our first line, we have something that says one variable statistics. If I hit enter and enter again, it will calculate some statistics for that list. And some of these you'll understand and some of these you won't. X bar is actually the average. So the average for this set would be 19.5. We weren't asked to find that, but we went ahead and did it. These we'll deal with later, but if we keep going down, you'll notice. There's our minimum and our maximum, which are the two endpoints of our box and whisker. Here's our first quartile or our lower quartile of 7.5. There's your median of 12. And there's your third quartile of 19. So the calculator will actually do this for us. So it's kind of a handy tool. Let's keep moving and have you make sure you do your lesson summary and answer the questions below. We've got these two, and then I'll scroll down a little so you can get the last one. Get those done, and we'll talk about this more tomorrow.